ಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂತಶಾಜನಂಜನಾಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ಮಿಳಿತಾ ಜನತ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಾಮ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಮನುಮಾಪಿ ಸಚ್ಚಿಕೋತ್ರಾಕ್ಷಗ್ರಜಮರೋಪುರಿ ಮಥುರಿಂ ಗಸ್ತಾವತಿ ರಾಧಾಕುಂಡಂ ಗಿರಿವರಮಹೋ ರಾಧಿಕಮಧಾವಶಂ ಪ್ರಪ್ತುಯಸ್ಯಾಪ್ರತೀಪಾಯೀಗುರು ತಂ ನತೋಷ್ಣಿ ಮಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೂಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತೀತಾನ ಪವಾನಿಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಅನಾರ್ಪಿತಚರಿಂಚಿರಗುಣಯಾವತೀರ್ಣಾಕಲು ಶುಮಾರ್ಪಯಿತು ಮುನ್ನತುಷ್ಬಲರಾಸಂಸ್ವಭಕ್ತಿಶ್ರಿಯ ಹರೀಪುರತ ಸುಂದರ ಧೀತಿ ಕದಾಂಬ ಸಂದೀಪಿ ಸದಾ ಹೃದಯ ಕಂದರೇಶ್ವರತೋ ಬಾಸಿ ನಂದನ ಜಾನಲಂಬಿತಾಭುಜೋ ಕನಕಾವದಾತು ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನೈಕಪಿತರೋ ಕಮಲಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷು ವಿಶ್ವಾಂಬರೋ ಧಿಯಾಬರೋ ಜುಗಧಾರ್ಮಪಾಲು ಸಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ಪ್ರಿಯಕರು ಕರುಣಾವತಾರ ಲಾದಿನಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಗೌರಾಂಗ ಶುರಿದಾಯ ಭಕ್ತಶಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಗಣಾಯ ಗದಾದರ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದಿನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗುಪೀಕ ಕಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ರಾಧಿ ಬೃಂದವನಾಧೀಶೆ ಅರುಣಾಮೃತವಾಹಿನಿ ಕೃಪಯ ನಿಜ ಪಾದಜ್ಜಾದಶನ್ಮಹ್ಯಂ ಪ್ರದೀಯತ ಭಕ್ತ್ಯ ವಿಹೀನಾಪರಾಧಲಕ್ಷಾಕಮಾಧಿತರಂಗಮಾಧ್ಯೆ ಕೃಪಾಮಯಿ ಸದನ ಪ್ರಪಾಲ ಬೃಂದೇನ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಚರನಾರವಿಂದ ಬೃಂದೇನ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಚರನಾರವಿಂದ ಶಿಲಾ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗ್ರಂಥರ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತನ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರ್ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರ್ ಪ್ರಮಾನ್ ಹರಿ ಸೊ ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಓಕ್ ಯು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ರಿಗಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರಿ ಆಫ್ Baba Chatur Shloki will have one more meeting connected to this for questions and answers but this will be the, the last one regarding our discussion of each one of the four verses hmm, in Bhogs by Sri Bhritra Sura. So today is our fifth class so we have the first introductory meeting and today we are studying the fourth verse of this Baba Chatur Shloki verse number 27 of 11th chapter of 6th count of the Bhagavad Puran, Srimad Bhagavad. So as usual, let's make first one, some brief summary of what we were discussing yesterday. We were studying the third verse, maybe the most popular one, that one among these four. Ajata Pakshayva Mataram Kaga Yatasnatas Yatavat Tanyam Yatavatsa Daras Kridarta Priyam Priyava Vyasitam Vyasana ಮನೋಭಟ ಬಿಂದಾಕ್ಷ ವಿಧೀಕ್ಷತೆ ತ್ವಾಂ ಸೈಟ್ ಬೃತ್ರಸೂರ ಸೊ ಗೀ ಹಿ ಗೇವ್ ದೀಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನಾಲಜಿ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ವಿಂಗ್ಲೆಸ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ ಹು ಇಸ್ ವೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಮಾದರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಓರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಕಾಫ್ ಹು ಇಸ್ ಟೈಡ್ ವೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಮಾದರ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಮಿಲ್ಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹರ್ ಆದರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಓರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಲೈಡಿ ಲಾಬರ್ ಹು ಇಸ್ ಸಫರಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಪರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲಾಬರ್ a husband who is far away from home. Similarly, Bhritta Surat said, Manora Bindaksha, Vidriksha Tehitva, my mind hunkers, yearns to see you. Hmm? So basically we describe how this verse, as, as usual, as well as the other verses, are very much in the line of laulyam, hmm? of hunkering, of longing, of sighing for the love of one's life. And this allowed them a very crucial ingredient for one to gain entrance into the Raga Marg. Hmm? To have some type of greed in connection to the legacy of the Brajavasis, if you will. Hmm? How they are 
approaching Bhagavan. So again, here we are not in Vrindavan, but Vritra Sura is then receiving enough inspiration to give us a, a trailer of what's coming in the 10th canto. Hmm? So again, in the beginning, we have the first analogy according to Jiva Goswami. These three are uh, successively higher than the previous one. So in the first analogy, the analogy of the bird without wings, waiting for the baby mother in, in the nest. It's an important beginning point, which means we have to acknowledge our uh, fragility and uh, dependence of our source, of our source of maintenance. I mean, that's not a small insight. Even though it, it may be rejected as Richard Sura, not the highest one, that something is not the highest thing, it doesn't mean that we don't need still to learn it. <laughs> That's the point that we always mention when we get with close to Gaudiya Vedanta, we, we find the highest thing, the highest theological conception, the highest everything. But it doesn't mean that we need to first go through so many things that are not the highest, but are in, in connection to us appreciating the highestness of the highest, if you will. So sometimes we may want to rush and jump into the ultimate conclusions of our Sampradaya, but also the Bhagavatam very expertly is taking us to Vrindavan in a very gradual process and first showing the examples of Prahlad, Andruva, Anambarish, Ambrita Sura, and so many luminaries that are there to emphasize certain important cornerstone points that has to be there. Hmm? So here, again, first inferior quote-unquote analogy that is very crucial. Acknowledge your own fragility, your own vulnerability. Hmm? Properly, by acknowledging your vulnerability, you acquire empowerment. If, if properly acknowledge, your vulnerability will invoke, will open yourself to be filled. Once you empty yourself, you accept how uh, weak we are, how marginal we are, but how in connection with our source we may be full of empowerment, inspiration, nourishment, and so on. Mm-hmm. So, this for example has to do with this, mm-hmm. the, rec- the necessity for acknowledging our uh, dependence and the need for taking shelter in Bhagavan as the b- little bird is taking shelter in the mother. But still, the analogy is not perfect, the bird is actually waiting for the, the food, not so much for the mother. <laughs> so, Vrita continues with a higher analogy, which is similar to the first one, but has some, uh, some little improvement, which is the one of the uh, calf waiting for the mother. In this case, the mother is not bringing some food exterior to herself, as with the birds, but is giving herself in the form of meal, if you will. So it's a more direct analogy, more accurate than the previous one, but still we have this same point that the hankering being expressed here, the longing, has to do with something that I want, and once that's there, the longing dissipates. So still British Sura is not happy with this analogy because his longing is not dissipating, it's increasing more and more. He already had longing and Chitra Ketu Maharaj, now, as Vritra Sura, with some so called obstacles of being a demon, actually, those obstacles are fueling his yearning and longing. Hmm? So, again, still, Jiva Goswami says these examples are not fully perfect for Vritra Sura. They are exhibiting some unsteadiness of pretty. No? Like the, that exhibition of the longing of the emotion is being somehow or other interrupted because, again, once the food comes, both the bird and the calf, their longing deludes. So that's not properly expressing what Prithisura has in his heart. So third example is required, and that's when he says, Priyampi Vishitam Bishana, the example of the, of the lady wanting to give herself to his husband, not so much to waiting him for him to give something to her, but wanting to offer herself, if you will, from tip to toe from his beloved. And of course, we speak in terms of lover and beloved, this goes hand by hand with what will happen in Krishna Lila, 10th canto, the Parakya of Raj, and how the gopis give themselves fully for the pleasure of Krishna's transcendental senses. Krishikena, Krishikesh, Shivanam Bhakti Ruchate. That's the definition of Bhakti. Give your senses to the Lord of the senses. 
So that's the ultimately represented in, as we say, the Brajabhasis, the gopis, interestingly, would say the one who protects Krishna's senses by giving their own senses for his enjoyment. That's the best thing we can do to protect our own senses as well, to engage our sadhaka deha, in other words, because we also won't imitate in one sense the gopis, but we can do the same thing by dedicating our sadhaka deha, constituted of senses, for the pleasure of Guru, Vaishnava. Hmm? So in this way, in, in one way or another, Brita Surya is again pointing more directly, sometimes more indirectly, but to the, old, the ultimate converging point of the Bhagavad, Braja Lila. That's why this is the Bhagavad Chatur Shloki. These four verses we try to deliver in the essence of the mood that the Bhagavad wants to give us the ultimate. So this is what we saw yesterday. So today let's go to the last verse of this Chatur Shloki verse. As I say, 27, I hope I wrote everything properly, you will tell me. So, <clears throat> I will share that in the, in the chat also, for the ones who are connected. <clears throat> and we will recite that, of course, in, in Sanskrit as well. Give me one second. Okay. There it is. So the verse says like this. Mamo tamashloka janesu sakyam samsar chakri brahmata sakarma vi tanmaya yatmatmaya dara jinisu asat chitasya nanata bhuya. So the translation says, British Surah is again, in the context of blazing separation, saying to Bhagavan, just about to be killed by Indra. <laughs> just about to leave this world. And these are all, this is the last verse of the whole chapter. After this comes the next chapter where Indra eventually kills Brita Sura, but this is almost like the last words of Brita Sura in this world, his ultimate legacy. <laughs> so he says, Oh my Lord, <coughs> let me, wandering in the wheel of samsara by my karmas, be only attached to your devotees. Although, although my attachment to my body, wife, children, and home is continuing by the spell of your external energy, I wish to be attached to them no longer. Let my mind, my consciousness, and everything I have be attached only to you. So this is the verse the British Surah will speak. I mean, he, he continues with his classical spirit of yearning. In this case, maybe the folk, the conceptual focus is the idea of attachment. We see the words here appearing. Hmm? Asakta. Hmm? So he's saying, Mamota Mashloka, let's go a little bit word by word to the, to the meaning of the verse. Mamota Mashloka Janesu Sakyam. So, Mama Utama Shloka Janesu. Utama Shloka is the name of Krishna, which means the one who is praised by very exalted slokas or poetry. Uttama means topmost, shloka means verses. So who, he who is praised by the topmost poetry or verses, he is Uttama Shloka. And Janes means the people, the people of Uttama Shloka. Another way of saying the Vaishnavas, mm -hmm. no, the ones who belong to Uttama Shloka, the ones who recite the topmost poetry in, in the praise of Uttama Shloka. Mm -hmm. So Mama Uttama Shloka, Mama means mine, so, Mama Uttama Shloka prefers Uttama Shloka Janesu, those devotees who are attached to Uttama Shloka, to glorify you, to describe you with selected poetry. Janesu Sakyam. Sakyam means friendship. So, the, the idea is, may I, 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 have the, I have friendship with those who are attached to describing your glories. Similar idea to the first verse. Like he says, Dasa Anu Daso Bhavitashme Buya, give me Dasa no Dasata. So this is the first line. Brita Sura is again about to be killed. So he's asking for some boon is there for him. He said, Please allow me to hmm, remain in the protection circle of those who are attached to you, to glorify you. Kirtaniya Sadahari, those who are engaged in constant glorification of you. Which is my situation. So in, in a classical system of praying and expressing one's humility 
these are different elements that generally are included in this type of verses, ser series of verses. Now Bridger Sura is like presenting his own position in a, as a lowly creature, if you will. So he says, Samsara chakre dhamata sakarma bihi. So sakarma bihi means because of my own karma, because of my own fruitive acts, samsara chakre dhamata. So brahmata means like Brahmanda Pramiti Kona Bhagavan Jiva. Brahmata means like wandering. Where? I'm wandering because of my previous karma in samsara chakri. In the wheel of samsara. Again, for us, samsara regarding to Brita Sur means something else, as we say. <laughs> no? Full essence, as we mentioned. He's in that forest fire. But he, in his humility, considered himself. I'm a conditioned soul. I was born as a demon. That's a pretty bad birth be due to my previous misdeeds. So I'm falling into this. Again, as, as Chaitanya Charitamrita says, Brahmanda Brahmiti Kona Bhagavan Jiva. I'm wandering in the creation of Brahma up and down here and there because of my previous misdeeds. Hmm? So now he further qualifies the nature of his entanglement or of his so-called entanglement no? in his humility say Tuan Maya ya. Tuan Maya ya means due to your own Maya no? because of your Maya Shakti your illusory energy Tuan Maya ya Atma Atma Ja Dara Gehesu if we separate the words that appear all of them quite close so Atma in this case means body so I'm entangled in Maya Shakti and again attached to Body, Atma, Atma Ja means those who are born, Ja means from Janma, those who are born from one's Atma, in this case body, so children. So I'm attached to body, to the extended version of my body, hmm? my children, my descendants. Uh, Dara, Dara means wife, and Gehesu means house, Griha, Gehesu. Asakta hmm? is attached, attached. Chitasya. Chitasya has to do with the chitta or with the mind. So, asatta chitasya. May my mind be attached. Now, even though I'm thrown in this world and attached to all this worldly stuff, let my mind, asakta chitasya, nana tabuya. Hmm? So, na means no. So, let my mind not be attached to these things I have mentioned. And by implication is nata buya. Nata means O oh Lord. Nat means Lord. Prananat, Radhanat, and so on. Buyat. Buyat means let it be. No? Let my mind be attached to you, only to you. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the, the idea of this verse, the conclusion of the Bhava Chatur Shluki. Sometimes there is one variety in, in, the, trans, in the verse which says sometimes instead of Richard Sura saying, my mind is attached to wife, house, and so on, says, may my mind not be attached to those attached to those things. No? <laughs> that's an, an important also caution <laughs> the, script, the, script, the scripture very much say that no? we should not be attached to mundane enjoyment but we should not be attached to those attached to that because that's a way of attaching yourself to that no? So by extended version by parampara if you will <laughs> I'm not doing that directly but I'm attaching myself to someone who is doing that directly so some version of that will come to me so this is another version of this verse where Bhrita Sura will say, may my mind not be attached to those who are attached to those things, but may my mind be attached to those who are attached to you and to the glorification of you. May I be born again, whatever I may be born. Again, he already made that place. I don't care about liberation. I don't care about my afterlife. But if I can ask for something, give me Sadhu Sangha. He's making like four circles with the main point which he started the first verse of the chapter Shloki. Again, dasa anudas. Give me das anudas. Allow me to be the servant of the servant. So, Brita Sura is expressing deep humility here, as we will see in the, in the, in the purport of Jiva Goswami here. Although here he is speaking about attachment, or we may say, or oh, maybe he's in Asakti, or in previous verses, he, one of his verses resembles. Mahaprabhu's fourth verse in Sikshastaka which spoke about Ruchi. So I may think of maybe he has Ruchi, maybe he has the Sakti. But Jiva Goswami will mention in his commentary, Ritasura is fully engrossed in Prem. No? 
So of course, Prem includes Ruchi, Asakti, all these possibilities. Some ta- particular taste, particular attachment, and on top of that, some other things. That's the point. If you have Prem, you have Asakti, Ruchi, Bhava, but in a Prem-like version, if you will. <laughs> the Asakti of someone in Prem is not the same Asakti of someone in Asakti. But there is some type of Asakti, for sure. You cannot say, Oh, Brajavasi have no attachment to Krishna. They only had Prem. And like, I mean, they have all, everything, and Prem, <laughs> if you will. No? So, British Surya is exhibiting here, speaking in terms of attachment. And he's in Prem, as we will see. So, he's exhibiting a type of humility that is connected to Prem. Sanatana Goswami makes that point in uh, Brihad Bhagavatam Brita. Hmm? He mentions that as you get attain Prem, Humility reaches a new height, according, corresponding to Prem. And that humility is fostering further Prem, because Prem is not a static achievement, it continues expanding. So as Prem grows, humility grows correspondingly. And as humility grows, Prem grows, and in this way, both of us, both of them, he says, acting as cause and effect to each other. One is fueling the other constantly. So, no wonder that someone who is in Prem, like Brita Sura, is showing a particular type of humility which takes him to express himself in terms of, I'm thrown into the wheel of samsara. And we may feel, oh, poor Brita Sura, he's just entangled in this world. No, no, he's has Prem. <laughs> and, and, and once, I, I think I shared this idea, no? because sometimes we hear these prayers of devotees in Prem who may feel, for example, Bhakti Notakur. If you study Amar Jivana, for example, a song that means my life. So it's like self-confessional song. And I say, in all my life I engaged in sin. I was happy when seeing others suffering. I was suffering with sins others happy. And I had full of lust. And I had this anartha. And you may wonder, like, so how, how is that? Because on, on the other side he's saying... I see myself as Kamala Manjari, <laughs> so I'm full of lust, but I'm Kamala Manjari, how to fit that? Does he really have lust and greed and he's happy with the suffering of others? No way. So maybe he's just writing the song for us, like making some show, I'm feeling this, but actually it's for all of you guys, for all of us. I don't think so, he really feels that, I mean. So what's, what's taking him subjectively to express in those terms if he's Kamala as Manjari simultaneously? <laughs> so again, there we find this paradoxical humility of Prem. Humility in itself is it's a paradox because, I mean, if you say you have it, you don't have it anymore. Because <laughs> once, once someone says it's an anti, anti-reflexive quality. Maybe you, you do some gymnastics and you develop strength with your arms and you can like wake certain things and you say I have strength in my arms and by acknowledging that your strength is not going down but if you have humility and say I have humility that's no longer there it's a very unique quality it's quite like I mean, you cannot you cannot have it ever <laughs> and in order to have it more you cannot you can ever you cannot ever admit I have it it's a pretty like paradoxical quality so you can imagine how such a paradox plays itself out in Prem, which is Prem in itself is a paradox for in many reasons. It's something quite, well, difficult to accommodate. So humility and Prem together, a very particular type of humility there. So once the idea came, you know, like, okay, Bhakti Nautakur has Prem for sure. So the point is, but also the nat- nature of Prem is always increasing, ever expanding and full of humility. So even though if you have Prem, you can have so much Prem that the subjective experience that you have is, I basically don't have anything. Because there is so much more to, to have. Mm-hmm. You, you get, Srila Siamras will say, uh, you are being thrown into infinity and you will realize there is no limit to progress. Mm-hmm. He say, are you ready for that? <laughs> to enter into a land where you will realize there is no limit to making progress. No matter how much I advance, everything keeps expanding. <laughs> so you need the corresponding humility to not go mad in such a realm. <laughs> so I was feeling that. No, but you know, Tagur is in the realm of Prem, but he sees such a big prospect is there that he, he sees himself compared to what he can have, and he feels 
I'm full of lust. Even though that's prem, but in comparison to how much more prem can be there, the subjective experience with the humility of prem, I'm full of lust. What to do? Hmm? So we should try to understand it at least a little bit to grasp this humility that naturally comes from devotion and gain. So he Brito Sur is considering himself utterly disqualified. I'm a Bada Jiva attached to all the ordinary things you may imagine. So please give me Salut Sangha Bhagavan. But he's a Premika, he's a Prem Bhakta. <laughs> so those are the symptoms of a Prem Bhakta, that's my point. That can be disconcerting. A Prem Bhakta will express Mahaprabhu himself. I mean, if there is someone who is, I mean, one of name of Mahaprabhu is Prem Purushottam. Ramachandra is called Mariad Purushottam. Krishna is called Lila Purushottam. Mahaprabhu is called Prem Purushottam. Supreme Personality dedicated to a project of tasting Prem. That's Mahaprabhu. Ramachandra is Supreme Personality showing rectitude. Krishna absorbed in Lila and Braj. Mahaprabhu in tasting a particular type of Prem, main purpose of his descent. So he's the very, the very taster of Prem. If Krishna tastes Prem and Rasa, what to speak of Mahaprabhu? That's what he counts for. Prem, Rasa, Nirasa, Gorithi, Ashwana. So the point is, if someone tasted Prem, that's Mahaprabhu. And what does Mahaprabhu say in his experience of Prem? Na Prema Gandhus Tidarapi Meharu. In me, there is not even the scent of friend. While simultaneously, he was showing all the Asta Sattvika Vikar, simultaneously ecstatic transformations like nobody has seen ever in the story of religious ex- practice. <laughs> but he was saying, in me, there's no even the scent. Scent, you say, like aroma? Like if you have some camphor in one box, there's no more camphor, but at least. There is aroma. <laughs> Mahavra say not even that is in my heart. Of oh, Prem, nothing. <laughs> but from that's from the mouth outside. But what he was exhibiting was like the very personification of Prem from tip to toe. So again, and he himself said, those who say they love Krishna, they do not love Krishna. Those who say they love Krishna, they love Krishna. Of course, he's not just saying that. Okay, I don't love Krishna. <laughs> we are not in Prem by that, but... If that comes really naturally, mm. that speaks seriously about this person. Mm. So here, Britasura is saying that I don't care about samsar. I'm in samsar, and I don't care remaining here, but at least, again, Sadhu Sangha, that's the warranty of your mercy to me. In any form, in any birth I may take. Mm. Mm. Even he's considering with this, I may not even be born to obtain a birth as a human being. I'm an Asura, by my karmic reaction, who knows? which will be my next birth. So, I don't know even if I will be a human, but at least give me Sadhu Sangha somehow or other. Make me born as a Gajendra, or as an, hmm, some animal that maybe get in touch with some Vaishnavas. Hmm? Bhakti Nautakur again say the same. I don't want to be Brahma, as I mentioned, no? if de- this devoid of Sadhu Sangha. But throw me to the body of an ant, if I will be received the morsel of the chapati of the Sadhu. That's for me much more fortunate. It's closer to Swarup Shakti, Bhakti Shakti than being a Brahma or Indra, who knows what. Mm. So here as Britrasura, we know Britrasura was devoid of association with the devotees till now, he, in, in that particular birth, according to the curse and the Lila. So he knows what does it mean, separation from the devotees. No? So he, he experienced this here. No? He has experienced the pain of associating with non-devotees. He was born as a demon. He was born in such an environment. And the first devotee he's meeting is Indra, who is a Sakama Bhakta. He's not in his best shape now, given the best example. <laughs> so being Chitraketu Maharaj, being the devotee he, he was, or he is, he's really longing for, I want Sadhu Sangha again. Please, give me that. Give me that. You gave me Narad Muni. You gave me Angira Muni when I was Chitraketu. Give me, give me Sadhu Sangha again, please. Hmm? So he concludes this Bhava Chatur Sloki basically by begging uh, for such Sangha, somehow or other. Hmm? So let's go to some of the purports to this verse given by our Purvacharyas. Let's begin with Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, as we have been doing in his Sarartha Darshini. Hmm? 
So he says, we are in the last verse. So at that moment, Vishwanath says, Brita Sura became humble. I mean, it's not that he was not humble before, but the special humility is coming. No? Like Bhakti Thakur mentions also, explains the six stages of Saranagati. And generally the last one is Dainya, which means a special type of humility. But he begins his Saranagati explanation with that one, with the last one. Like implying, even though in the higher stages of Saranagati there may be a special humility, from day one there has to be some type of humility in order to be Saranagati. Some type of humility in order to per- ad- allow Saranagati to happen on some level. And what to speak in the zenith of Saranagati, a very special humility that we are seeing here. So Vishwanath said, Ritrasura became humble. So we add to that, became extremely and especially humble. <laughs> Reaching his last breath almost in this world. So he says, now he's paraphrasing Ritrasura's verse. He's, Ritrasura thinks to himself, Oh, how can such a low rascal as me attain such good fortune? Let me remain in this world. Hmm? Like implying maybe in the previous verses, one may have thought, okay, British Sura is longing for eternal service to Bhagavan in the spiritual domain, but now a sudden stroke of extreme humility hits him, and he says, why am I to beg for such a great thing? Who am I? I'm so fallen. Let me continue in samsara. I, I, I actually deserve that. But, Sadhu Sangha, please. Sadhu Sangha. With Sadhu Sangha, there is no samsara. Or samsara takes another whole meaning. Samsaru Vaishnavadi, you know, says the famous word from Padma Purana. Deva Vaishnava Palita. Hmm? Say the whole samsara is sustained by the Vaishnavas, says Krishna to Arjuna in the Padma Purana. The devas are nourished by the Vaishnavas. It, even though it seems that devas are nourishing everyone, they obtain their nourishment from the Vaishnavas. And he says, Aham Sar Vaishnavadi, no. me myself, say Krishna, I'm nourished by the Vaishnavas. Therefore, Tasma Tristas the Vaishnava. Therefore, Vaishnava is the highest position of all. Say Krishna, even to me. For me, the Vaishnava is above my head. So you are trying to. In one sense, some people want to become Krishna, quote unquote, to become one with God, but that's not the highest position. For God Himself, there is something higher, mm-hmm. the Vaishnava. <laughs> so so Bish- Bishwanath ex- continues saying, Buddha Sura prays in this way, in this, in this way, in this verse, like, let me remain here, who I am to ask for something higher. Let me have friendship with the devotees of the Lord. And let me not have friendship with persons attached to their bodies, children, houses, and wives. Hmm? Again, here we have no problem with body, house, attachment, and wife, uh, house, and wife. The problem is attachment to that. And we have to draw the line there. It's not that the Bhagavatam is condemning that you have a partner, that you have a house. The point is, when you attach to that, your partner... As much as you attach to your partner, your partner is not so partner. <laughs> it's not so, you're not loving so much your beloved. Because you get attached from, a, of course we are speaking selfish attachment. Your house is, is, is no longer a house. It becomes a prison, if you will. Brahma is mentioning that. As much as your attachment remains, all those things remain shackles and prison. Not because of the person itself, but because of how you are addressing that. Which are the lens to which you are seeing everything. So here, British Sri is praying, I want to have this type of friendship, Sakyam, I want to have friendship with the Vaishnavas, and not have friendship with the ones attached to material attachment, if you will. I already have a satsanga. I don't want more a satsanga. Please. Mahaprabhu says, a satsanga tyag e Vaishnava chan. The attribute of a Vaishnava is to renounce bad association. Because again, association means attachment. Sangha means association, but also means attachment. It means imp- the two meaning, the twofold meaning speaks about the, the implication of associating with someone. Association means you get a close connection to someone to the point that there, you get attached to the person, and that attachment starts to affect your sense of identity. Because as Guru Maharaj mentioned in his purport to fifth verse of Sikshastakam, which speaks about attachment. Our attachment are made of our identity is made of those things we are attached to. Our sense of I depends on our sense of my. So sadhu sangha means get attached to the sadhus 
and replace your sense of identity with that of a sadhu identity. Sadhu means real, honest, also transparent. Mm-hmm. So sadhu sangha means attachment to honesty, if you will. <laughs> and that will give a whole new identity. That's the purpose. And that's why asat sangha is rejected, because we know that will foster a false sense of identity that is already ingrained for millions of lifetimes. <laughs> So I'm trying to get rid of that and replace it with the proper sense itself. I have not had association with your devotees, says Vishwanath, paraphrasing Brita Sura, and thus I have experienced insurmountable sorrow. So again, humility, separation, Brita Sura's longing for having Sadhu Sangha again. In this lifetime he had not had it as Brita Sura, so he's just Try to imagine a whole life of devotion, receiving Sadhu Sangha like he had as Chitra Ketu, and then next life you are supposed to continue progressing on that. And he's doing that, but there's a special arrangement here, and the special arrangement is he's deprived of Sadhu Sangha for a particular purpose. But that is, we see his bhakti is not diminishing, he's blazing of longing. So that's speaking about who he is. Now, Jiva Goswami will clarify that in his own purpose. So, let's share what he says. Jiva Goswami mentions in his Krama Sandarva commentary. Hmm? Thinking that it is impossible to have the good fortune of seeing the Lord, again, full humility, Vritrasura considers that he will remain in this world. No? So, for a moment, things. I'm so low, I won't be able to change him. I will continue give, being born here. Therefore, with tears, Jiva Goswami mentioned, with tears of separation, I would say, he recites the next verse. He's not crying because he has to come to the world. He already said, I don't care about coming or not coming. So those tears have to come from some other place. And they come from Prem. Jiva Goswami says that in the next sentence. He says, because of its expression of pure Prem, the story of Britra's killing is mentioned in other Puranas among the characteristics of Bhagavat as an outstanding feature. And we mentioned this in the first lecture. How when other Puranas speak about the Bhagavat, they refer to him as the story that includes the killing of Ritra Sura. It's like a very <coughs> broadcasted event. Ritra Sura Badopitam Tat Bhagavatam Ishyate, says Agni Purana. It is called Bhagavatam that book which includes the story of Ritasura's death. Mm-hmm. So, of course, when we say the death of Ritasura, we are not speaking about the moment with Indra is cutting the head of Ritasura along one ear. That's not the main part. This is the main part of Ritasura's death. Mm-hmm. We, we may say it's the death of his any false sense of identity and his mm, full connection with friends. Mm-hmm. So here, Jiva Goswami, as we see, he, he confirms this story speaks about pure expression of Prem, and of course, that refers to Brita Sura, that's not referred to Indra's standard of devotion yet. In this case, Srila Prabhupada is not giving any purport to the verse, arguably maybe because in one point this conclusion, somehow or other, is repeating many points that Brita Sura made in the first two verses, especially the first one, asking for Das and Odas, in case of being born again here, give me that. So this last verse is somehow a type of, this sometimes happens in this like structure of these prayers. Like the last prayer will be some type of summary of the previous ones, and also the, the author will express his her humility, his fallen condition, and pray like for a final blessing in that context. So all this is, is happening here. Please give me association with the boats. As we said the other day, when Mahaprabhu inquired from Ramananda Roy, which, in, which, between all forms of suffering, which is the most severe, which is the, the most painful form of suffering, and Ramananda Roy said, to be deprived of Sadhu Sangha. No? That's really painful. <laughs> that, that's, uh, he said basically, that's unbearable. That's an unbearable condition. So we, we have to reach that point. Of course, hopefully without the necessity of being devoid of Sadhu Sangha, but 
we should indirectly understand that by appreciating what we are receiving in the context of satsang. And Ramananda confirmed that after that. He said, when Mahaprabhu said, okay, and, and from all the type of auspicious activities and, and blessings, and what's the highest activity for the human being? He said, the, un- the only auspicious activity is the company of Krishna's devotees. Like implying real auspiciousness, permanent auspiciousness and transcendence. What's bestowed by Sadhu Sangha? Hmm? So here Brutasura is really clever. No? He's not praying for Krishna. Krishna, give me yourself. He's saying, give me your devotees. And whenever the devotees are, Krishna is there. No? You may ask for Krishna, but if it's a Krishna that does not include the devotees, who knows which type of Krishna that is. <laughs> no? As Srila Siyan Maharaj will share, with all respect, by the example of Mirabai, who was always singing to Krishna, but to Krishna, not to the devotees, he say, that's not our Krishna. Hmm? When someone asks Silasya Maras, have you seen Krishna? And he say, he say, the Krishna that I want to see, it's not that easy to see. <laughs> there are many Krishnas, <laughs> many conceptions of Krishna that, no? the one I want to see is fully surrounded by his associates, if you will. That's the com- most complete manifestation of Bhagavan. That form which is a byproduct of the affection of his devotees. I want that Krishna in Braj, uh, who is surrounded by waves and waves of Prem Madhurya, um, of the love of Braj, that make him the way he is. Uh, that's the Krishna I want. You take away those the devotees and only leave Krishna without them. I don't, I don't have nothing to do with that person <laughs> or something like that. That's not my Krishna, I don't know. That's not the study of my Sampradaya, if you will. Mm-hmm. So again, people generally want to see God. Have you seen God? Something supernatural and so on. But if you want to see God, as, as Guru Maharaj will say, well, you can see love of God. That's the most concrete form of perceiving, really perceiving God. Where there is their love of God, God will be there and some extra feature as well. <laughs> So, in this way, Bhritra Sura was, even in previous verses, second verse, for example, he, Nana Kapishtam, Nachap, he's praying this Nana, na, rejection of this goal and that goal, and some rejection here of certain attachment, but now he's expressing, I want this in particular, I want this particular goal, I want attachment to your devotees, basically, that's, that's how the goal of life is attained, the Bhagavatam say that, to the mouth of uh, Rishavati. He said, Mahat Pada Raja Adishekam. The best way to attain the goal of life is Mahat Pada Raja Adishekam. Adishekam means bathe, bathing, like you do the Adishek. Mahat Pada Rajam. Pada Rajam means the, the dust from the feet. Raja means dust. Pada means feet. And Mahat of the great devotees, of the great personality. By bathing myself, in the dust of the feet of the great devotees, that's how well we attain the goal of my life. So very cleverly here, Bhrita Sura is expressing his exclusive sense of attachment in that direction. No. He, has, he doesn't have mm, like multi-branched attachment. He has like fully condensed, one-pointed attachment in one particular direction and he's investing all that in this final prayer. And allow me to if I will be born here for sure, give me Sadhu Sangha. That's, if, if you give me that, I mean, that's everything. Krishna will be there and everything will be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in this way we see you know, how in this series of prayers, Brita Sura is actually expressing an increasing of bhakti. You know? Let's remember, he was chitraketu in his previous lifetime. He was cursed by Parvati because apparently he committed Vaishnava Parat towards Shiva by joking with him. But generally we know if someone engages in Aparat, Bhakti will retire, not will diminish. Not because Aparat is more powerful than Bhakti, but because pa- Bhakti Devi is not pleased when there is Aparat and she retires herself. It's not that Aparat forces Bhakti to retire or something. There is nothing more powerful than Bhakti. Mm-hmm. And in, in his Madhurya Kadamini, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur makes the point, since we know that the result of Aparad is to make Bhakti retire, we can realize that Chitraketu did not commit any Aparad. 
because as a British Sura, his bhakti was growing more and more and more after every single of these four verses. Mm-hmm. So actually he was cursed, quote-unquote, to be born as a demon, quote-unquote, <laughs> because he commits a parad, quote-unquote. <laughs> but actually the whole background of the whole situation is totally different. So that was just some divine arrangement in order to make Chitokit to get closer to the goal as quick as possible. And his devotion was totally not only not affected but nourished and increasing. In this count in the context in the context of longing and separation. Longing and separation. So let's let's conclude by sharing some brief words about separation. We have some minutes that I wanted to share yesterday but there was no time. We have some minutes today. So some words about Biraha. Sometimes that's the term for separation. Sometimes Vipralamba is used. Vipralamba is more exclusively connected to Madhurya Rasa. So we can use the term Biraha, which means separation. But also interesting, Biraha. Raha means union. And B means special type. So Biraha means separation, but etymologically means a special type of union. Because as we know, separation makes the heart grow fonder, and there is some form of union there. Your emotions in separation got internalized and in union get externalized. If you don't see someone for a long time and suddenly that person comes, your, all your feelings go out and you embrace the person and so many things. But if you're in separation, all those feelings go inside and become like, start to churn, to be churned and condensed. So there's a purpose in separation, that's the main point. Without separation, there's no union to begin with. <laughs> I mean, if you are always with someone, never separated, how can you speak with of union? You have always been there. <laughs> the separation is needed to create those flavors and dynamics in the lila, especially union, separation, high, glide, high tide, low tide. That's upgrading the prem. That, that has a purpose of upgrading, hmm? downloading the latest updated version <laughs> of the prem up, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> To speak in more contemporary terms. Mm-hmm. So this Chatur Sloka Britra Sura is expressing this intense longing. Mm-hmm. So hunkering is separation. And uh, again, that makes union relishable. Mm-hmm. As, as someone who has never been thirsty, the person will never be able to fully relish water. Mm-hmm. If I bring you a glass of water at any normal moment, well, I may take it, may not take it. But if you are dying in Sahara Desert <laughs> and I bring you this of water, only this, this is like Golok, after Golok. <laughs> because you are in need of that. You have longing for that. Or you are hungry and I bring you some food. I mean, you will appreciate that. If you are full, okay, not nice. So separation has to do with this. We're creating some thirst, some hunger, some fire that makes... The heart would be deep thirst. Hmm? And of course, in the context of meeting the beloved and making him happy to service in this context. Hmm? So sometimes it's called raga also. Hmm? Deep thirst. We can call ragas deep thirst. Hmm. Rather, we should enter into that. We are to develop some form of separation. And the only form we can develop is called purva raga, which means I've never been with Krishna personally. I'm not coming from... Golok, I, I have not been kicked out from there because of being envious to a gopi or something. So, but I can develop separation by hearing about Krishna before meeting him, by hearing about his devotees before officially entering into the. That's how, by hearing, chanting, remembering, Shavan, Kirtan, Shmara, we are in a form of separation now. So we should, call, we should advance through separation. That's the whole art. We should learn to cry for Krishna. Not going to a theater school and learning drama and crying whenever we want, but internal, proper longing. Hmm? And, and, and when you reach a very intense stage of separation, like Bridge Sura is here, I mean, the life of that devotee will only be saved at some vision of his Lord. If, if some vision, some glimpse of his Easter is not coming, the life of such a transcendentally desperate devotee is just depending on that. <laughs> if there is even any delay in that vision, the body will experience. It will be difficult, basically, to tolerate the resultant suffering. But it's not mundane suffering. Again, always remember this. No? 
Bitter and under my Krishna premier at Buddha. Externally, seems oh poor Buddha Sura crying so much, longing so much, he's suffering so much, and the inside full of ananda. So the point here is Buddha Sura is experiencing such longing, and again, all this is a reference for us, and it's a trailer of what we will meet in the Bhagavatam. Remember when you see the, the degree of separation that the Brajavas exhibit. And Krishna goes out of Vrindavan and Uddhava goes there to send a message. That's like astonishing hmm? to Uddha, Shastra did. So here Brittasura had reached such a point that the only thing that will man- satisfy him and maintain him with life is meeting his brother. Hmm? So he's not satisfied. He will, if, let's example, he will be satisfied only with the jewels in the deep, in the depths of the ocean. Not with the, with the let's say, the salty surface of the ocean with the fishes a little bit more deep with the jewels in the bottom of the ocean nothing more so um, separation creates that introspective moment going up the, and these paradoxical emotions come this humility comes at this point the devotee will feel I'm not qualified I'm not qualified for your service so if I'm not qualified for your service at least the devotee will feel as Richard Sur is saying, most probably I will be back to this world. So at least if I'm not qualified to render you personal service in eternity, at least, at least make me attached to that aspiration. And that's what it means, give me sadhu sangha. Give me sadhu sangha means, give me the sadhus, I will get attached to them, and to get attached to the sadhu means to get attached to their aspiration. That they become my aspiration. And someday that aspiration will become, go become true. Mm-hmm. So if I cannot obtain that, at least give me attachment to the ideal, to the aspiration of that. So I may, some may day I may attain that. On some level, give me that assurance, if you will. Mm-hmm. So that's why British is praying in this way. Great humility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And again, we have this paradoxical thing. In this stage, we have deep humility, I feel myself extremely low, extremely falling, extremely undeserving. We cannot imitate that, but we should understand that's to be attained. Because that's true. I mean, when you really got a glimpse of the how noble and, and glorious is Prem, I mean, you cannot but feel, what did I do to obtain this? I mean, I'm ashamed that I had paid so less. I mean, I, I, I'm crying because of shame. I mean, this came to my life and I'm and I'm not giving everything to that yet. No, I, I, it's like it's embarrassing. I mean, we should feel embarrassed that we are not that embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassed now. Yeah. That's what someone said to Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta in that sense. He said, You should cry for Krishna. He said, What if I cannot cry for Krishna? You should cry because you cannot cry for Krishna then. So something like this. I'm not feeling embarrassed, but I should feel embarrassed because I'm not feeling embarrassed <laughs> due to what it came to my life. I mean, I continue with my life in a general, ordinary way on some, so many moments and such a great thing knock on my door after so many lifetimes and it's such a deep, noble ideal and how I'm reciprocating with that. Oh, and so low. I didn't do anything. I am and examined my past life and it's like nothing I do to... So one side we have this, but on another side we have, especially in these stages, great aspiration, great longing, great attachment. I want that. I do not deserve that. But I want that. But I do not deserve that. <laughs> the, the boat will be rocking in, in these two directions, basically. Now, this, this, these conflicting feelings will be rocking. It advance the boat is hard. Maybe one in, one, in our heart, that rocking is not that much yet on some level. It should be, but gradually that will continue more and more. The devotee will say, "I in advanced stage means you really know how unqualified you are. That means to advance spiritually. <laughs> it doesn't mean to realize, I'm so great, so incredible. Finally, I realized that. No? <laughs> no? The price to pay, you will feel smaller and smaller and smaller. In a nice way. Again, it's not neurosis, it's not paranoia. But you feel yourself smaller. You are getting close to the infinite again. The closer you get, the smaller you become. <laughs> but at the same time, you cannot give up hoping. The hopes increases because 
you get closer to the infinite means you get closer to the degree of grace coming from the infinite. So that grace is so special, especially coming from Mahaprabhu, that you cannot but, how do you say, you have hope against hope. You have this expression in English. <laughs> so sometimes they say the birth of hope has made the nest in, in the heart of the devotee. So even though you feel extremely low, at the same time it's a raging, blazing hope. So these two emotions are there. Mm -hmm. And taking shelter is one heart. This is a very famous line, and, and I'm almost finishing with this. When Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis almost met with Mahaprabhu once, and the very first thing they said to him, they fell flat on the floor at the distance and crying and crying, full of humility. They were really humble. Mahaprabhu was saying to them, Please do not be such so humble. Your humility is like breaking my heart in pieces. You are too humble. <laughs> I mean, you can be humble, but you can always be more humble. But they are they were too humble for Mahaprabhu's standards, so that's a lot to have this in its So they say Apana Jogya Deki Mori Pong Shoga Tatapi Tumara Guna Upajaya Luva. Rupa and Sanatan pray like this to, to Mahaprabhu say Although we see our unworthiness, we really see that our mind is still greedy for your attributes. We find ourselves in that paradox. We really know we are the worst of the worst, lower than the worm in the stool. But at the same time, we are blazing with hope because of your merciful and attractive nature. So, what to do? No? So... So at that time you cannot find consolation anywhere else in this world, basically. Such a devotee like Vritya Sura, it is said that it's like a deer pierced by an arrow. And the arrow of, of hankering, of longing. You cannot take the arrow back. It's there in your heart. And you, whenever... Uh, and you feel yourself unworthy again. When every time an insight of your unworthiness comes in your heart, and it's appear apparently darkening the sky of your heart. I'm so falling, I'm so low. It comes also the remembrance of the magnanimity of our beloved deity, casting a, a hope and prospect in our life. No? So in this way, the, again, the boat of the heart of this devotee will be rocking between the, the waves of hope and despair. Hope and despair. No? I'm so fall, you are so merciful. But I'm so fallen, but are you are so merciful. So who will win at the end? <laughs> of course, this story will end with a happy, we have a happy end. No? So finally, of course, the devotee will conclude, the mercy of my beloved deity will erase all kinds of unworthiness. No? All my anarchists put together are nothing in comparison to the mercy of Hari, Guru, Vaishnav, Mahaprabhu, Sadhu. Mm -hmm. So eventually the hope will be there. The scale will go to the side of, of hope. No? And I will, the devotee will develop that intense hope. I will attain the lotus feet of, of my yesterday. Mm -hmm. So this has been shown by British Sura. So hopefully we, 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 we were nourished by his prayers and example. And we may be able to imbibe something of this in our own uh, sadhana, in our own stage. We need to develop some corresponding level of healthy and worthiness, but healthy on top of that, hope and shelter in realizing the nature of the mercy that is coming to us and advance through those like paradoxical features <laughs> closer and closer to the realm of mm, longing, divine love. And yes, eventually hope will win, especially if we are connected to someone like Mahaprabhu, Gorni Tenanda, mm, that's the Guru, Vaishnav. That's the warranty given from day one. Mm. If we take proper care, we remain in a humble way. So, British Suras has shown that in a great degree, but again, at the same time, he's given just some appetizer about how that same, all these two same elements will be fully unfolded, fully unpacked, fully expressed in the realm of Raj, hmm? to which, in which this Baba Chatur Slok is ultimately uh, pointing to as the zenith of the Bhagavad in, in the Raj Lila. So, Thank you very much for joining me in this series of lectures and inviting me to speak about that. It was not in my, in my plans. It was a very nice series of discussions. And uh, on Saturday, the day after tomorrow, we have one last meeting where we will have uh, questions and answers. And hopefully, if you have any 
questions or topics, whatever, but ideally connected to what we have been seeing in these first five lectures. I think there are many things that we may continue uh, trying to trying to continue elaborate upon. So all those questions will be welcome. So see you next Saturday at the same timing. Shila Gurudev Ki Jai, Shiman Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Sri Sri Dauji Gopal Ji Ki Jai, Lantarash Nimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Sri Britra Sura Ki Jai, Chitra Kittu Maharaj Ki Jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrind Ki Jai, Gaur Praman Hiro Bancha Kalpataru Gesta Kipa Sindhu Vyai Vacha, Patita and Pavane, you Vaishnavi, you know, no more. Ananta Koti Vaishnava, Pindaki, Jai, Gouda Haribo.